Welcome back to Dawn of Man HP. It's time for Inception to take another step into the Neolithic Age, and it's very tempting to go with something economic here, maybe more farming or some animal domestication or mining, thatching, weaving, etc. But what I actually think I need to do here is go with something that isn't directly economic in nature, fortifications. Though it is very necessary for our long-term prosperity. And this is a project that's going to take quite a while to really see it come all the way to fruition. We're eventually going to want to build walls all the way around the settlement, defensive structures, etc. Palisade is our initial wall, one log for that. Gates require two to allow people in and out. Platforms, two logs and four sticks, so people can stand on those. Warriors can shoot out at the oncoming invaders. But I'm going to go with watchtowers first. So I think having a few watchtowers around and then eventually expanding that to walls, we're doing a basic thing first to maybe give us that little bit of extra protection and then going with the full thing later on. These are much more expensive as you may notice. Four logs, eight sticks, and then also two straw. At least we have something to use that for and two leather. So I want to place these outside of where we're going to keep our settlement. And that way, the idea is that the attackers will hopefully attack them and not so much attack our dwellings and our crafter and our people that are inside and all of that. Let's see how this is going. Fighting the wolf over here. Looks like we're going to be totally fine. So we're also going to need to boost the leather to deal with this because each of those requires two leather. And so hunting, hunting, hunting gonna be even that much more important. We're bringing in plenty of tannin, but we just don't have the skins. And so hopefully we can gradually scale that up. And another reason why this is so important is, as we've talked about, with the Neolithic Age, we've got farmland, you know, land itself, especially arable, fertile land, such as we have around here, very valuable, becomes more and more valuable, and Therefore, resources are going to come under attack from other communities and groups if they think they're strong enough to take it or if they are simply jealous or whatever the natural motivations may be. And so we need to be able to defend it. Now, since we have immigration off, population growth only coming from natural births in the setup that we're doing, that means we can't take a lot of losses in combat. So defending is going to be really important and... You know, if we lose our, too much of our population, then it's not going to matter how fast we're developing in the other economic areas. So that's my thought process for going forward with that and really going to be even more of a focus on absolutely hunting as much as I possibly can going forward to get that leather for the watchtowers. Even though workload was quite high, I still planted one more field in the spring right over here. Barley, another 3x3 three three area to go along with the einkorn and emmer. Now we're fully diversified with the three types of grain crops that we are able to plant. Reason being, population is probably going to still rise. We plan on that. And we've got 15 bread, no flour, no grain left. And we still have about a season until we're going to start bringing in the harvest. So just not quite enough, in my opinion, to gradually build up a stockpile. Then we got raiders. Just got the alert. And they are over here on the far side of the river. There's five of them. Having no watchtowers or anything built up in that direction, we need to set our defensive alert. And we keep the speed very slow on this so I don't screw it up. As everybody gathers... I want to send them out in numbers past where our sort of buildings are. See if we can engage them around that clearing, slight clearing in the woods area. It's probably not going to be a great fight in terms of really being able to see what's going on because we are going to be having all of the woods around. But more importantly to us is to make sure that we are defending our vital structures from the avenue of attack. And here they come. Let's see how this goes. 
There we go. Got a spear fight going on over here. We knocked down that raider. A couple points for killing the first one. We got them all, but we lost one, Gorik. And that's pretty, pretty average for this type of a fight. G having one casualty, but knocking out an inferior force. So we're going to deactivate and go back to normal behavior. Everybody will gradually resume their normal jobs. And then if we look over here at the raiders, maybe we'll take a peek at this one, which is a little bit out in the open. You can see they leave, their, their body's going to decay, but their weapons we can actually pick up and use for ourselves. So they got a bone spear there, a flint spear there. It looks like a bow. Yep. So we will get a little bit of equipment from them. Still unfortunate for us to lose one of our citizens, but if we can encounter those type of odds or better going forward, then I think that we're going to be doing all right. The trees are really the only way you can tell, but it's early winter and we're going to build another watchtower. I thought we'd take a look at this one getting built. So we've got our dog nearby, and particularly with one person here at least to start. This is going to take a little bit of a while. We've got the basic framework. We have lost another citizen due to a fight with another pack of cave lions. We definitely got the better of them, but did lose one more in the process. Now we're going to get some help. And so we've got basically just an elevated triangular thing coming up here, pyramid style perhaps, and then an area for them to stand and shoot out. Opening in the bottom. Take a look at it from a little bit different angle. And we're finished. So we've got the ladder going up for them to get into the tower. And this is, I think, our third one? Something like that. So, one here. We've got one up over here. So we're looking pretty good in terms of starting to encircle the area. We still have quite a bit to do in order to be fully defended as we work our way around. But we are improving the skin situation. We've got another harvest in. Not doing too bad. Another spring has arrived and we are ready for a new upgrade. We're going to go with thatching. This is another long-term project. We're now going to have more work than we know what to do with. First of all, let's clear some room. I want to get some of these trees knocked down. We have a new resource that we're going to need, mud. So we collect that from shorelines. Much like fishing, we're going to come all the way down here. And each mud work area, you can actually cover three sections of the river if you place it properly. So let's see, put one about there. We'll get those three. And I want to move only to one person, but let's go up to 50%. And just like the fish it regenerates over time so if we spread out the areas that we are extracting from that will serve optimally then another one down here and let's go over by the lake as well so we'll have four different sections extracting from 12 sections and we should be able to get a reasonable amount of it fairly quickly doing that. Okay, so why bother with all this? Well, we're over here and probably should get time moving a little faster, but I want to see some of the new buildings. The tent, four sticks and two skins. And then the hut, upgraded version of that, you get one more person can stay there. So four instead of three, th one third increase in population for each house. You've got 
A log, two straw, and the four mud there required to build it. They can cook their meals inside. They use fuel to do it, but still, that's a nice little benefit. And they also can store food for longer periods of time, any resource, instead of, I think it's a 50% bonus. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's 50% bonus in these, and then it's a 100% bonus, so things last twice as long when stored in a thatched structure. So that's very nice. And they're working on all these trees. Then, if we take a look at some of the other possibilities while they do that, in the storage department. So we have storage huts, which are the upgraded version of the storage tent. And again, different resource requirements. And then granaries preserve food, but they do it even better. They do that three times as well. Oh, we need another sledge. Let's get that rolling. That'll use up some more leather. We've got some of these coming down, so we can begin the process of building. So, you can also upgrade your existing structures, which I'll get to in a bit. Let's go here and build one more. So I want to build two of these, because when you're upgrading one, you can't use it anymore for the time being. So, if we have two more, then we'll have plenty of slush extra, if you will, to work on that. And I'm also going to want to put, see, I'll put one over here. I don't want to build it just yet, but I'll, I'll get it in place. Let's see, let's shift you around facing the village. So I'm going to put one down here and one, I'd like it to be up here somewhere. You know what, right, um, right behind that perhaps. I don't know if there's a better place because this is kind of crowded over in this area. Oh, another person has expired. But you know what? I'll just put it up on this side of the hill. That might not be too bad. So storage. And a second granary. Yeah. And then I'll move the wall around that when we eventually build the wall. Okay. So they could be further apart, but we're going to be doing a whole bunch of work on those. Obviously, it's going to tax our workload and everything. But once we get these up and built, then the idea is we'll have to move the food from the storage tents into the granaries, and then we can upgrade those. You see there is upgrade to storage hut. So you've got to expend the resources to do that as well. And these do still have to be repaired every so often, but it will give us so much more capacity. And also, just the work that we're going to have to do, we literally are going to be rebuilding all of our structures virtually. Like, not the totems, and not the hearths, and not the crafter, and whatnot, but the, all of our residences, all of our storage facilities are going to have to be rebuilt. Never mind the fact that we're... Huh. We, uh, we had somebody killed by the wolf. And a dog got killed by the wolf. We did eventually take it down, but that was, uh, that was unfortunate. All the way down to 47 people. So a bit of a tragedy there. Ah, we have one of these going up. Let's take a quick look at that. You can see the intertwined sticks around the bottom. And then it's, it's similar to the other ones, but you can see it looks a little bit wider. You've got more intricate, you know, beam work up here at the top. And we've got all this around the bottom. And that's actually what they're using the mud for. I'll have a link down in the description below to another primitive technology video on demonstrating how this might have been done, which I think is very interesting. But this is very this structure is very, very similar to what you'll see if you choose to watch that. You see they had the ladder up there to build the upper part of the structure. Get all of this up. And of course this is the thatch up top. There's our first hut. Yay. It's the grasses and or straw angling on the roof. 
and then you can see now we're working on a granary so that's good timing we can see one of those get built right at the same time here and they're really working on those logs use lots of logs for this structure and we can see that going into place the dog's like what are we doing here and of course they're stilted a little bit up off the ground to keep them away from small vermin as they build another hut in place and this one taking a bit to construct as well again the interwoven sticks as improvised walls three people on the task many hands making light work and again we've got the angled lid and once again we're slapping more earth around the sides There we go. Granary in place. Okay, so let's take a look at our situation then. The granary, we have all kinds of different things that we can say are allowed or not allowed. Not allowed. Notice they're all food type products. So what we want to do now, I think, is move everything. Let's see. This is, yeah, that's one of the storage tents. So food and drink. It's got tools, materials, and clothing. We never had a reason to change these before. But now I think I want to change them all to not allow food and drink because those should go in our granaries. There we go. And so these are actually smaller, but they hold like it's for in terms of the footprint, they're smaller, but they hold as much as these do. And then you can see two and a half times longer. And these are two times longer. So the wiki said three times. I think that might be wrong then because it's only say two and a half. But it's still longer than it can last in these. Then you got the prestige and up to four people and requiring the fuel. So then we can just work on upgrading from now on. I think I'm just going to have one at a time upgrade to hut and upgrade to storage. And then we also, we're just getting into the summer here, so we're going to have lots of work going on. I want to get the fortifications up. I want to start building the wall, but I don't know that I have. We did get our final watchtower built over here, so we have a decent ring. I might eventually want to build another one over here. But I'm ready to start on the wall once our labor actually will allow for it. I don't want to pass over thatching as a building technique too quickly here because it's another one of those developments that arose naturally out of a more agricultural society. This is a structure quite similar to what is depicted in the game. And the process basically involves making bundles such as these out of straws and grasses, arranging them and securing them on the roof. And it is believed this was done in many parts of the world though the exact techniques and materials used varied widely based on climate and habitat and things of that nature. This view is from the inside of a reconstructed Inca building. And thatching is used even up through modern day. It's never really completely been gone away from. There are some parts of Europe, for example, where it's popular to build in this manner, combining thatching with more modern tiling on the roof. And you notice in all of these, the roofs are quite steep. They need to be at about a 50 degree angle or more in order for precipitation to run off and not penetrate into the structure. There is some regular maintenance that needs to be done every few years, but they have been reviving in popularity as an ecologically friendly solution, and a well done thatch roof can last 50 to 60 years before it has to be completely replaced. So as we head towards fall here, late summer, we're going to take a look at one final bit of construction. They are now upgrading our first storage tent to a storage hut. And again, similar structure to what we've seen before in terms of how they're putting it together. Beamwork, they've got the 
interweaving of the sticks on the sides. Now there's three of them working on it. And they did haul everything out of it at first before they had to tear down the old structure completely and then rebuild it from scratch. So it's not so much of an upgrade, even though the game sort of tells you that's what it is. It's just replacing it, which makes sense. It's a totally different type of building. Oh, we lost a hunt there. We got lots of ladders and poles prying this thing up. But obviously, oh, we need to build another sledge. You just see that you know the buildings look much more modern. We no longer feel like we are living in the Stone Age because we're not. We've got doors. Looks like they have two doors on this one. Yeah. And there's our storage hut. It is complete. Much more presentable. Let's go. Oh, we have a mammoth attack. Let's go see where that's going on. That was over this way, I do believe. Oh, well, it's not much of an attack anymore. And that was our last mammoth hunt, I do believe. It's going to be very nice for us in terms of resources, but I don't foresee us finding or hunting any more of those. It just came a little bit close enough to our camp for us to head off and look at it. So the journey of Inception will continue as we try to modernize into a proper agrarian society. Till then, thanks for watching, everybody. More Dawn of Man will continue.